Jonah? What are you eating? Oh, hey Isaac. Why, it's matzah. What's that? Imagine if you took paper and ate it. Wow, sounds super delicious. Can I try some? Sure, here. Wow, this tastes exactly how you described it. You're such a master of the English language. But what's it for? Well, Isaac, I'm glad you asked. It's for the Jewish holiday of Passover, or Pesach in Hebrew. Oh, I know that one. I'm sure you do, bud. Care to explain? The story of Passover starts with the Jews in Egypt. Not those Jews. No, not those Jews either. There we go, those Jews. Pharaoh is scared of the Jews because of their massive population, so he forces them into slavery and requires that all sons born into Hebrews must be drowned in the Nile. One baby, though, named Moses, is saved and is raised by the Pharaoh's daughter as a prince. When Moses grows up, he's told to command Pharaoh to let the Jews go in the classic Let My People Go moment captured here. Let my people go! The slaves are mine. The story goes that God lays upon the Egyptians ten plagues, the last of which is the killing of the firstborn. The Jews protect themselves, though, by marking their doors with the blood of a lamb, which is the Passover offering. God sees this and therefore passes over their houses. Get it? This plague ends up killing the Pharaoh's firstborn, and in anger he lets the Jews go. But then he changes his mind, and Moses must hurry towards the Red Sea. As the Egyptians begin to catch up, the Red Sea is split by Moses and God, and they run to their freedom as it engulfs the Egyptians and slaughters them. Fun, right? No. No, it's mostly the matzah. Oh, but there's also the satyrs. Oh, what's that? Well, Isaac, since you don't know, the seder is the big ceremonial dinner of Passover. Two satyrs are celebrated on the first and second night, but in Israel, they only do it on the first night. It's a time to come together with family, eat, sing, pray, but most of all, recite the story of Passover. We read from a book called the Haggadah, which details every ritual that must be performed. This year, because of COVID, my family is doing the Seder over Zoom. During the Seder, a pizza matzah is broken off and hidden for the children to find. Passover is a week-long holiday, and throughout the whole time, we don't eat any chametz. That basically means that you don't eat anything with yeast or flour or anything like that. This is to commemorate the fact that when the Jewish people were leaving Egypt, they didn't have time to wait for the bread to rise, which is why we eat matzah instead of bread. During the Seder, there is also a special plate with symbolic foods on display in the middle of the table. The items on it all represent different parts of the Passover story. For example, one of the items is maror, or a bitter herb, usually horseradish. This represents the bitterness of slavery in Egypt. If you want to wish someone a happy Passover, just say Chag Pesach Sameach, which means have a happy Passover. Anyways, Isaac, now you are finally ready for Passover. You know, I think I might know somebody who knows about that. Hello, Selwyn House. I'm Rabbi Adam Shire of Congregation Shar HaShemayim, standing right here across the street from your school. On Wednesday night, we're going to begin our celebration of Passover, and it's an honor for me to share a brief message about Passover with you. People think that Passover is about the story, about telling the story, and that's partially true. But the essence of Passover is about the questions. There's the ritual called the four questions where the youngest child, or sometimes all of the children, stand up and ask questions of the adults around the table. And the essence is not the answers, but the questions that they ask. You know, 75 years ago, there was a, a scientist in America named Isidore Rabia, a, a physicist, who won the Nobel Prize. And he was asked, how was he able to achieve so much in terms of his schooling and education? What was the secret to his success? And he said something amazing. He said, for most of the other kids, when they would come home from school, their parents would ask them, well, what did you learn today? He said, but for me, when I would come home from school, my parents would ask me, did you ask any questions today? And that was what instilled within him the curiosity and that drive to ask questions and understand more about the world. Right now, our, our schools are closed, our synagogues are closed, our churches are closed. So much in society is closed and we're staying at home and we're still learning. And the essence is to understand that this is not only a message of Passover, but a message for life. Keep on asking questions, stay curious and continue to learn. Stay healthy, stay well.